as a follower of Jesus, you know, we God has that promise to us that He will walk alongside us in every situation, whatever life throws at us. God is there, and often that is shown to us through people who walk alongside us. And yet, lots of people come to me as a GP, and I know they don't have that personal walk alongside, if you want. People had needs which were not really been met by all the other services, so we came up with the concept of chaplains working alongside the primary healthcare team, addressing issues, talking about things which were just not being talked about, and people had nowhere else to go with really important personal issues in their lives, and we found that chaplain was the right place for them. I think the reality is, as a GP, that you have this amazing privilege where people will come to you and often discuss some really deep and heavy things but also the reality of being a GP is that you don't have the time to walk alongside them in the way that you wish you could. Not everybody that I see does need um, particular types of therapy at the moment or they're, they're currently not ready for therapy for, for lots of very good reasons but what they do need is someone to walk alongside them as they handle these bigger things in life. Sometimes patients, they don't yet know what they need. They're trying to untangle that spaghetti in their head and they just need someone to help them pull at the threads and understand what the next step is for them. We know that mental health workers do a great job. We know that counsellors can do a great job, but there's something else that's necessary to walk alongside people, but there isn't a particular uh, therapeutic agenda, there isn't a particular counselling model, there's just the humanity of walking alongside but in a very professional way in the safety of a general practice context and that's where we felt we needed people like chaplains to actually step in and be alongside our patients. Our chaplains at the moment work remotely on the phone but that may evolve into some face-to-face -face appointments as well. Um, but a patient could expect to be um, called by the chaplain um, after they've been referred to us um, to set up an initial appointment. And then they're normally um, 50 minute appointments. Um, so they've just got that really generous amount of time that I guess as a GP, you just don't have that luxury to be able to offer um, where they can just sit and it's their own agenda. You know, what's on their heart that they need to offload and work through. Um, the chaplain is just there to listen and you know, listen actively as well to give them that space and time to work through whatever issues that they're facing. Um, and to just be able to, whether it be one appointment, whether it be um, several, then we've got that space and the capacity to be able to be generous with, with that time for them. We've been, I suppose, taken aback by how, how needed it is. And I suppose sort of post-pandemic has really amplified the need for um, mental health and well-being uh, services to patients uh, locally. And we are almost running a two-month waiting list, so um, the need to grow our chaplains, the number of our chaplains, is, um, yeah, is, is really becoming an obvious uh, need from our perspective. Well, I'm convinced that in every church family there are people that have pastoral skills, they care about people, they're good at listening, they want to make a difference in people's lives. And you have that opportunity within your, your faith community. But there are lots of people outside your faith community that need those skills. So people like you who are interested in people who would like to spend some time walking alongside others, if you have counseling skills, that's great. If you've got pastoral skills, of course, that's important. Listening skills, but we'll offer training because nobody's done this before. And we're asking at the moment for people who don't need to be paid. Although it's a professional service within general practice, it's in a voluntary worker capacity, but people who could give perhaps half a day a week on a regular basis, uh, we'd love to hear from you.